When bacteria grow on solid media, they give rise to colonies. So a sample from an infected area of a patient is inoculated onto an agar plate and incubated. After this procedure, a biomedical scientist is looking for the presence of colonies. Bacteria usually have stable and predictable properties, and so by examining the morphology of a colony, we're taking the first step towards identifying what genus and species of bacteria is present, and therefore what is causing the infection. It's important to say here that we cannot use colonial morphology to, to identify bacteria with 100% certainty, as there is just too much variety and diversity within bacterial populations. So once we have presumptively identified a bacterial pathogen based on the appearance of the colonies, a biomedical scientist must then perform further tests, such as biochemical or serological tests, to identify what is present. Among the bacteria, there's a huge diversity of characteristics, and this includes what a bacterial colony from a particular species looks like on a particular type of media. And so we can describe the morphology of a colony using some basic terms. First of all, it's important to make a note of the size of the colony. Some colonies may be several millimeters across, while others may be tiny, like pinpricks. The shape of the colony is also important. Some bacteria have a regular circular edge to the colony, while for others it may be irregular or even filamentous. Some colonies are quite flat, while others are raised. And some colonies appear sticky and mucoid, while others look dry. And all of these features are worth noting. The colour of the colonies is especially important, and it's essential when you are making a note of the colour that you know the type of media you are using. Examples of this are colonies growing on the media McConkie and Cled. Both of these media will differentiate bacterial species which ferment lactose from those which do not. The gastrointestinal tract always contains large numbers of a family of bacteria known as the Enterobacteriaceae. And these are all gram-negative, facultative, anaerobic bacteria, and E. coli is a member of this family. Now, most of the Enterobacteriaceae, including E. coli, will ferment the sugar lactose, and as a result of this, will produce acid, which lowers the pH of the medium. However, two important gastrointestinal pathogens, Salmonella and Shigella, do not ferment lactose. And so Bacconchi is a selective differential medium as it can distinguish between bacteria which ferment lactose and those who do not. The sole carbon source is lactose, and this medium also contains a pH-sensitive dye called neutral red. So if lactose is, is fermented by a bacterium, the pH drops to acidic, and the dye turns from colourless to pink, producing pink colonies. If the lactose is not fermented, the colonies are colourless. So in this case, a lactose-fermenting species, such as E. coli, produces pink colonies, whereas a non-lactose-fermenting species, such as Salmonella, produces colourless colonies. While all of us have lots and lots of E. coli in our gastrointestinal tract, even when we're healthy, and we'll expect to see pink colonies, when people are suffering from a Salmonella or Shigella infection, the biomedical scientist is looking for colourless colonies. These are the same organisms growing on a medium called CLED. CLED stands for cysteine lactose electrolyte deficient, and it's a selective differential medium like McConkie. In this case, the pH indicator present in the medium is bromothymol blue. So in this case, lactose fermenting colonies produce acid and the drop in pH leads to yellow colonies. And colonies which do not ferment lactose remain colourless. Another feature of CLED is that it inhibits the swarming growth of a pathogen of the urinary tract called Proteus. And this is Proteus growing on a blood agar plate, and as you can see, it has covered the whole plate. When this happens, it's difficult to see if there are any other species of bacteria present. However, when we look at Proteus growing on CLED, on this medium, it produces discrete colonies. So, inhibiting the swarming of Proteus is another useful feature of CLED. Another selective differential medium, and in fact the one most commonly used for the detection of Salmonella and Shigella from faecal samples, is a medium called XLD, which stands for xylose lysine desoxycholate. Some bacteria produce characteristic pigments, which can be useful in identifying them. 
For example, Pseudomonas aeruginosa may produce a, a pigment called pyocyanin. When this pigment is produced, the colonies have a characteristic blue-green colour as shown here. In some cases, we will need to observe what, what effect the growing bacterial colony has on the medium. For example, if you look at the colonies on this blood agar plate, you can see that there is a golden halo around this colony. And what's happened here is that the growing bacterial cells have secreted a protein called hemolysin. And this is lice, the sheep red blood cells around the colony. What the golden halo you can see is, is an area where there, is, where there are no remaining red blood cells present. When you see this effect, it is called beta hemolysis. A number of bacteria cause beta hemolysis, and in this case, the organism present here is Streptococcus pyogenes, which is also known as a beta hemolytic Streptococcus. On blood agar, you may also see bacterial colonies which appear green. This is known as alpha hemolysis. In this case, the hemolytic activity present in the bacteria is less efficient, and so the hemolysis seen is incomplete. So the area around the cells appears green, indicating incomplete or partial lysis of the sheep red blood cells around the colony. This effect is typically seen in the viridans group of streptococci and also the major pathogen streptococcus pneumoniae, also shows alpha hemolytic activity. It's sometimes important to be able to distinguish between particular groups within the same bacterial species. So, for example, it's important to be able to identify the pathogenic E. coli serotype 0157H7 from, from among all of the other types of E. coli present in the gastrointestinal tract. We can do this using a medium called Sorbitol McConkey. Another example is the need to rapidly detect MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and to differentiate MRSA from methicillin-sensitive Staphylococcus aureus. One of the ways this can be done is to use a chromogenic medium such as this one, Brilliance MRSA agar. Using this medium, only MRSA should produce the denim blue colonies as shown here. However, as I said at the start, we can't rely on colonial morphology alone. If we want to be sure about what is present, we will need to perform extra tests.